Got to put the ring on. You're listening to Realism Sports Talk with your host, Terrell Jenkins. Yes, you are listening to Realism Sports Talk, episode 78. 78, all kinds of things going on. Thanks for everybody for the prayers for my mom. Hey, she's still here. She's still here. Talking about, I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. That's what we do out here. Told you she's the strongest woman I ever I ever met. Yo, that's everything for me. But, uh, hey, man, you got to check us out on the podcast, mini podcast formats. Check us out. Spread the word. Of course, our YouTube channel. You know what I mean? And then we got the merch. The merch is flying, yo. And uh, the link for it is in our Facebook page that my co-host on Raw Tommy does. Check it out. See what's good. If you need something custom, hit me up. I can take care of all that for you. Um, but yeah, man, represent and support, yo. Represent and support. The biggest thing is I need y'all to share the stuff. I need y'all to share the stuff. T- give, tell somebody. Tell somebody so they can tell somebody. You know what I'm saying? Tell your friends. Tell my friends. We can be friends or whatever. I don't care. We just need it. I got 104 subscribers. I'm very grateful for that. But I ain't trying to have more videos and subscribers, so I need to pump it up some more, guys. Pump it up. Because today we're talking about QBs that's still unclaimed. Franchises with big-time decisions to make. Free agents reneging out here like we playing spades out here. They reneging left and right. Um, of course, we got to do some NCAA tournament talk. Everybody loves March Madness. Even if you ain't watched basketball the whole entire year, you like, March Madness, let me fill out a bracket because everybody thinks that their bracket is going to be the one. And then after day one, I'd probably say 98% of them are gone. <laughs> but that's what makes it fun, though. That's what makes it fun. We're going to talk about that dude, Kyrie. I mean, this dude. And then, you know, a wrestling trailblazer passed. So we got to play homage to that also. But welcome back. Welcome back. Of course, the number one thing we're going to talk about is Deshaun Watson. Sean Watson, I was trying to get this episode in before he signed with somebody, you know what I mean? <laughs> but breaking news, I'm like, dang, go on, man, I was talking about these other teams, yo. Um, but before we get to the four teams he's after, because they said the Seahawks, <clears throat> the Panthers, who was the favorites, I don't know, then the Falcons, then the Browns. But there's two teams that I look at that's like, I feel like that they're just like, <clears throat> they're missing a golden opportunity here. They're missing a golden opportunity. The number one, I've said it before on the show, the Eagles. I feel like the Eagles are blowing a big opportunity. I understand they love Jalen Hurts, and I understand that they think that he's going to be something special or whatever, whatever, whatever. But when you got somebody like Deshaun Watson out here, a generational talent, you know what I'm saying? This college coach said he was the Michael Jordan footballer. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, Right now, right now, if he gets in the league, is he a top five quarterback? We'll have to discuss that on Raw. Is he a top five quarterback? Let me write that down so I don't remember. There, there we, because we got to discuss that on the Raw episode. But so the Eagles, you're in a situation with three first round picks. One that the Colts just gave you since they got rid of Carson Wentz. You have an opportunity to try to put a package deal together. And I don't, there's nothing about the Eagles that, that make me want to think that he wouldn't want to go there. Why not? You know what I mean? And I don't think after this year you're going to have the opportunities to get these get a big-time quarterback like that. I just don't see it. I think they're going to put themselves behind the eight ball. And I think they should have made a move. I think they're being too happy with Jalen Hurts. And sure, sure. Maybe being like the way they are with him is going to bring out the best in him because he's going to be like, the organization loves me, coaching staff loves me, they have faith in me. And maybe this is going to propel him to be what they hope that he's going to be. I just can't see it. I didn't see it at Alabama. I don't see it now. I see glimpses of this and this and this. But I saw glimpses of Ryan Leaf also once in the blue moon, whatever, before he started cussing out everybody in the locker rooms and throwing stuff all the time. I just I just can't see him I can't I can't see him flourishing that much. And the other one is the Raiders. The Ra- y'all are making big time moves, big time moves. Getting Chandler Jones on defense, y'all getting players. That division is loaded. Ra- La- Las Vegas, you have a brand new stadium, Las Vegas. Imagine if you had Deshaun Watson walking up in there. Because that division is loaded, you got to do something. You have to get something in there to get free agents to want to come. 
I mean, Chandler Jones did come, yeah, but I don't know. I just feel like those two teams blew opportunities to go after. I'm not saying they were going to get them, but just didn't try. And I think both of them, honestly, I think both of them didn't want to hurt the feelings of their quarterback. I honestly do. I think that's what it is. I think that they had these discussions. They just didn't want to hurt their quarterback because they didn't think they were going to get him in. You know, they said, might as well just keep our quarterback happy. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe, I, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, if Washington puts together a, a package right now, I don't care what Carson Wentz thinks about it. He can be gone quickly, quickly. You know what I'm saying? But let's talk about the teams that, that are in the hunt for him. The first one being the Seahawks. The Seahawks, was, well, obviously, they lost Russell Wilson. I don't know what that fan base is going to think about that. Um, and it's funny how, yo, it's funny how organizations throw out the little shade. They were like, well, Russell made it clear that he didn't want to be here. You say that after the fact. Now you say that like after the fact. You know what I'm saying? When, when he was there, it was like, we have no intentions of doing that. The way I'm, I don't want to hear all that, man. All this political congressman talk, I'm tired of that. Be for real and say what it is. You know what I mean? If he wanted to be gone, tell him he had to be gone. I mean, simple as that. Say he wanted to be gone. Don't play all this poo poo stuff because if he tells you he wants to be gone, like he did a year or two ago, you knew eventually that was going to happen. You should, so you should have started preparing for this a long time ago. Instead, now you're out here with, and you ain't even got Geno Smith no more. He's a free agent. Not that anybody's going to pick him up or care, but whatever. But now you're stuck with Drew Locke and you praying, you praying for anybody to come in the door. And when I say anybody, I'm referring to. The ninth pick in the draft, if if a quarterback's there, or Colin Kaepernick. On to the next one. <laughs> the Panthers. We thought y'all was the number yo. Know, past two days, everybody said the Panthers are the number one team. Panthers are gonna do this. We're gonna trade McCaffrey. They're gonna, they're gonna do that. Da, 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 da. McCaffrey wouldn't have played for the Texans. He'd be like, dude, I'm still hurt. My leg still hurt. Oh, I can't. He would have done some James Harden stuff like, oh, oh, my neck and my back. Oh, I can't play. Oh. That's what would have happened. That's what would have happened. But the Panthers do have the sixth pick in the draft. So if they want to get one of these young guns, cool. If you want to re-sign Cam, cool. You still got you got scary ghost Sam Darnold. <laughs> in the same draft class, James J Josh Rosen's a free agent. What happened to Josh Rosen? Wow, he was supposed to be intelligent like Aaron Rodgers. Remember? They were like, he's cocky and he has he has the the everything like Aaron Rodgers. You know, he's confident, confident and cocky and had, he's so, so so much smarter than everybody else. On to the next one. We're talking to the Falcons. The Falcons out here trying to make moves. They're trying to get Jarvis Landry in the building. You might as well resign Julio back because he just got released. But uh, obviously they don't care. About like Jalen Hurts, I was talking about in like uh, Car, cause they are here talking about yo Deshaun Watson's coming in the building. Matt Ryan, don't get your panties in a bunch. <laughs> they don't care. They going after him, and they got the eighth pick in the draft. So eight, they always got something to fall back on. If the eighth pick's there as a the quarterback, they can always take that one, whatever, whatever, and just go from there. But I'll tell you what, just my personal opinion. And maybe it's the Michael Vick love in me. Because I, yo, my generation, Mike Vick was still, still saying Mike Vick. I'm like, looking like Tommy with his, his roster right now. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, yo, imagine Deshaun Watson in Atlanta. I know in Atlanta sucks. I know it's, even though, even though more than half of the people in the Raw episode last week picked them to win the division before Tom Brady came back. What? Come on, man. Y'all just crazy. <laughs> anyway, Deshaun Watson would just look good in the Falcons gear with that black helmet with him. I think he looked fresh to death. And that's probably just because of my love for Michael Vick, the way he played. He just, it, it was just something about him playing. It was kind of like Iverson playing in the NBA. It was just something about them, like, that, that just made you feel like, yo, <laughs> you know what I mean? Michael Vick, man, they have got dirty burning out here. Like, you know, yeah. Uh, but I mean, whatever. And then the last team, since Baker Mayfield wants to send out his goodbye letter and all that, why are you so immature, dude? Like, you're so immature. But then again, immature people are getting paid. I mean, Russell Wilson's on the team. Kyler Murray's probably going to get a check, even though I ain't seen it yet. 
But Baker Mayfield, you basically are out of Cleveland. Basically, you didn't you didn't got yourself out of Cleveland. And I don't even know why you did that. You got them to get rid of Odell. They believed in you. And then you wanna you mad because you ain't got no contract extension. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And that's why Lamar Jackson was on LeBron talking about what well, a black quarterback has to do more. And y'all mad because you ain't getting that money. You, you ain't getting that money. And you want to know why you ain't getting that money? You want to know why? Because y'all ain't putting it up on the field. You ain't doing it on the field. Sorry. You're not doing it on the field. Uh, Cleveland was supposed to be AFC Championship game past couple years. They went to the AFC Championship game against uh, Kansas City or whatever, whatever. They had that game. My homes was out and Chad Henney beat you. Baker Mayfield, I'm sorry, son. Keep doing your commercials. Keep doing your commercials, Johnny Manziel 2.0. I'm sorry. But you didn't, you didn't pack your bags out of there now. But I tell you what's worse is the Browns. Because if you don't get it, if you don't get Deshaun Watson, what are you looking at? Who are you looking at now? Who are you looking at? Because you got Case Keenum. And I'm not saying he's a scrub, but Case Keenum's going to be one of those guys that plays. He's going to play well sometimes. He's going to play bad sometimes. He's not going to put you over the top. You're going to need a superstar roster to put you over the top with Case Keenum. And that's kind of what he had with Minnesota with all them weapons he had and the, the miracle in Minneapolis or whatever. That was awesome, though. That was awesome. Saint fans are killing me right now. They cussing me. Yeah, Saints. I feel bad for y'all Saints because y'all Y'all get some, some tough situations. But if you don't get, if you don't get Watson, who are you going to get? Well, the biggest word I said was Baker Mayfield was immature. He's immature. So what do you need for that roster? Because Cleveland hasn't been a winner. They already, people already think they're a winner. Go get somebody that has been a winner and is very mature. Jimmy Garoppolo. I say go get Jimmy G. The only problem is it's real quiet out there in San Francisco. I ain't seen them talk about Jimmy G. I ain't heard them talk about the surgery he had or whatever. It's real quiet. Tommy was talking about, they were saying Trey Lance ain't picking it up quick. It, is Jimmy G going to be available? We just all assumed he was gone and getting Trey. He even thought so. He thought every, he thanked everybody, whatever. But he didn't do it disrespectfully like Baker Mayfield. See, that's the difference. He thanked him and said, hey. I just hope I get go to a contending team. I love my time here. Wait, wait, he don't want to go, but he want to play. He wants to play. I mean, so my thing is Jimmy G would be the perfect fit there because the organization would need somebody like him to stabilize them. I mean, <clears throat> you're losing all your weapons, but you got somebody like Amari Cooper who's a great route runner to be there with him. You're going to still need some more help, but you got two solid running backs. I'm just saying, even if you had to give up Kareem Hunt, I wouldn't give up Chubb. But if you had to give up Kareem Hunt to go over there, whatever, because you know the 49ers love 15 running backs. Shenanigans. Kyle shenanigans in fantasy. But um, that's, that's what I'm thinking. But it's quiet over there in San Francisco. You can hear cricket, yo. But Baker. And then if this, if this happens, where's Baker fitted at? Who's going to want him? Everybody said it was going to be Tampa Bay, but the GOAT's back. It has to be the team that's scared the most out here. The team that's ready to win right now but scared to death because they prematurely just gave away Carson Wentz and that's the Colts. The Colts are ready to win. The Colts are ready to do this. Um, I feel like if you're going to take a chance on Carson Wentz and a hot wire like Phillip Rivers, why not take a chance on Baker Mayfield to prove himself with that team? Um, I can't see the Colts. The Colts are desperate right now. The Colts are desperate right now. You know what I'm saying? You look at the Saints. That's why the Saints need to jump on Winston now. Saints, jump on Winston now. Because with the, with, like we were talking about with the Colts, the available QBs we got, we got Fitz Magic or Fitz Tragic if he's in Washington. Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle. Jacoby Brissett. Cam. And then Marcus Mariota. Remember, he's still 28 years old. Mario is somebody that I think will express some interest, but I feel like the coach should try to get Baker Mayfield because 
What are you going to tell your fan base? We let Carson Wentz go for nothing. We gave away an extra first round pick that the Eagles are wasting and not doing nothing with. But what are you going to do now? What are you going to do? So it's it's a big time situations with these quarterbacks and teams. I mean, I already went through the Seahawks and the Panthers and the Falcons. At least they have draft opportunities to get one of these two quarterbacks if they don't get Watson. The Browns, it's all in or nothing, man, because I'm I'm looking at it like you have Case Keenum if you don't get Watson. Sucks. So we out here playing free agent reneging. Everybody plays space, know about reneging, you know what I'm saying? Da da da. da. My boy, J.D. McKissick, for all the haters out there talking about nobody wants to come to Washington. Yeah, I know. He said, nah, Buffalo, I'm going to stay in your lane. I'm going back home to Washington. Told you some. See, somebody wants to come to the organization. I am happy to have him back, though. I am happy to have him back. Um, but, I mean, hey, whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever. But Buffalo, Buffalo's like, that's cool, that's cool. You don't want to come? You don't want to win? <laughs> you want to stay in purgatory? They Look, they, they scooping up O.J. Howard. Everybody thought O.J. Howard was supposed to be a star coming out of college. And he never could do anything. Even with Tom Brady, you couldn't perform. Buffalo must saw something. Um, I don't know what that means for Dawson Knox, though. What's that mean for Dawson Knox? I don't know. Uh, maybe they're running a two. I mean, it is two tight ends everywhere. We'll see. Uh, but they got OJ Howard. And then they got Vaughn Miller. Tommy, you shedding a tear because you thought he was coming back. But y'all got right. I mean, we ain't going to get to that yet. But I know that's your boy. And now he's going to Buffalo trying to win another one. I think that's smart by Vaughn Miller to go there. And they gave him six years, $120 million for Vaughn Miller? I'm just glad he ain't going. To, I'm glad he ain't got a star on his helmet. I was scared he was going to the Cowboys. Glad he ain't. But so Buffalo, Buffalo's out here obviously trying to get a scat back, running back, da da da. If they can't get one of the big names like a McCaffrey, Barkley, or a Melvin Gordon, which I don't think Barkley would fit, but McCaffrey would fit with anybody. Here are some names that you can get cheap, just like they got O.J. Howard cheap, just like they got O.J. Howard cheap. Since you spend all that money on Von Miller, you might not have the money. Somebody like a Cordero Patterson might take a discount, and we saw what kind of scat back he could be. Gio Bernard, who's been a scab back all his career, he was just hurt with Tampa Bay. He was just hurt with Tampa Bay. But if he's healthy, you can get him on the cheap. Daryl Williams, Kansas City. I don't know if they're going to let him out of the building, but he didn't look like he was better than, than CEH when he was there. The Bears released Tariq Cohen. And people remember this dude was decent. He's one of them little change it down kind of guys you could probably get cheap. Remember, this is about cheap. It's not about being a super, superstar. Remember remember before Jonathan Taylor came on the scene? Marlon Mack? I had Marlon Mack in fantasy. And Marlon Mack was putting up numbers, yo. I even scooped him up this year and put him on my bench just in case something happened to Jonathan Taylor because I still thought he had some tread left. You could probably get him on a cheap. And you know Buffalo likes some old running backs on the cheap like Frank Gore. You can still utilize him and do things. So... But here's my number one. Here's the number one who's used to playing in the cold, who's used to playing in the snow, who's used to playing in the playoffs. Mr. Could have been Super Bowl MVP, James White. James White. The Patriots out here letting everybody go. They let Brandon Bolden go. James White. That's the name to think about. That's the name to think about for Buffalo. And then we look at, and then we looking at other teams. Cowboys. Don't they always just get in their own way? They get in their own way. You put out a tweet saying you signed Randy Gregory. You had to take it down. Why? Because you can put some dumb stuff in there talking about if you get if you get any kind of anything, da da da. We can take away all your your money, your guaranteed money. What? People sign contracts for their guaranteed money, not for the other part. We know you ain't gonna guarantee to get the rest of it. You might sign a two hundred million dollar deal, but if only eighty of it's guaranteed. You probably only go get about 80 of it, yo. You know what I'm saying? People cut, people trade, do all kinds of things. So when you start talking about two people taking guaranteed money away, Cowboys, just keep doing what you're doing, baby. I love it. You're going to give us a chance. Um, So Denver wind up getting Randy Gregory. So I guess that's the compromise for Von Miller or whatnot. 
Um, Denver, the one need that you need is right there. He's available right now. It just got released. Go get Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper to Denver, I think, would be huge. I think that would be huge. All right, so we're going to pause real quick for a commercial break real fast, real fast. And then we're going to talk about the GOAT and what's going on with that. Welcome back. <laughs> I love sliding the chair. This chair is awesome. If you don't have a chair with wheels, you don't know what you're missing, y'all, because it's off the chain. Ah, uh, anyway. <laughs> the GOAT's back, like I said, many times on Raw, many times on Realism. I just had this weird feeling, man, like, you can't go so far and set records and whatever and almost win another MVP and look at the landscape of the NFC and be like, yo, I'm done. Why? Go get eight. Go try to get eight. And I feel like that's what he did. He said, he said it's an easier path. It's an easy, easier path. I'm not saying it's easy. It's never easy in football. But why not? Why not? The Bucks are still making moves. They're getting guards. They're getting players. They're getting corners. They're signing wide receivers. They're signing players that are making sense for their roster. And then we're looking at other, other favorites. We see the Rams losing pieces. We see Green Bay losing pieces. And they're not signing nobody. And they're not signing none. So I'm looking at it like, if Aaron Rodgers would have known this ahead of time, would he have still stuck in the decision he had? Or would he have went on to the Mile High Club? That's, that's something we're going to have to talk about on Raw because I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying it's hard to go against Brady compared to the other people, but he probably still would have stayed in Green Bay and whatever to do with whatever he was going to do, but I don't know, man. I know I know. part of him is mad. <laughs> and I think, yo, Tom Brady, as competitive as he is, he might have done this on purpose. He might have said, let me see what Aaron Rodgers is going to do first. Because he likes stealing people's thunder, yo. He loves doing that. When did he retire? Like, right before the Super Bowl or something? Or something like that? You know what I'm saying? People were like, yo, why are you out here making it about you? And it's supposed to be... The Remember that? And now he's like, oh, Aaron Rodgers. Is there. Oh, Tom Brady's back. <laughs> yo, I can see Tom Brady doing that. Because when you're a psycho winner like him and Kobe Bryant, you make up reasons to be mad and reasons to push yourself. He probably looked at it like, oh, Aaron Rodgers says he's coming back. That means he thinks because I ain't here, I'm going to do it. I'll watch me come out here and do it now. What? And you stole my MVP? Watch me come out here and get it. That's the way their minds think, yo. So I think that's interesting. I'd love to hear somebody really say what happened. I mean, he could say, oh, I spent time with my family. I wonder if the Aaron Rodgers decision has something to do with it. We'll bring it up when Raw, too. Let's see what's going on with that. So the Bucks the favorite now? I say so. I say so. I just told you why. Green Bay and the Rams, they losing players. I don't see nobody else stepping up doing much. You know what I'm saying? I don't see much. So, that's that's what we're looking at right now in football. Everything's going to hinge on Deshaun Watson. I'm sure it's going to happen before the Raw episode, so we really going to be popping off then. Um, but, yeah, but NBA, we got to talk about we got to talk about Kyrie Irving. I'll tell you what, Kyrie Irving is one of my favorite players. I have his high school basketball jersey. I think basketball-wise, he is one of the most gifted players I've ever seen in my life. He might be the best scorer I've ever seen in my life behind that guy. Um... I'm an Allen Iverson fan. I'm a Georgetown fan. So I'm used to the guard, the smaller guards doing all these crazy things. Iverson used to wow me all the time. His persona and everything else drug me in, but his play wowed me. I feel the same thing about Kyrie Irving. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah, some of the things he says is outlandish or whatever, or maybe it's really not. But on a basketball court, it's just insane. And that's why I keep saying it doesn't matter what place they get. Once they get in the playoffs, it don't matter. You pair him up with Kevin Durant, I feel like they're automatically in the finals. I don't care if they're starting at 9, 10, 8, 7. It don't matter to me. It really don't matter. And I'm not saying some teams like Miami or, or uh, maybe the Sixers or Milwaukee or something can't push them to seven games or whatever. But when you push it to seven games, that means they're on the road. And that means Kyrie Irving gets to play. So it's, so you can be like, yeah, I got game seven in my home place. Yeah, yeah. Well, game seven also means that that guy, Kyrie Irving, gets to play. 
So, <laughs> so it's great. I'm still picking the Nets. I'm still picking the Nets. Uh, uh oh, breaking news. Deshaun Watson is incredibly torn. He was impressed by the presentation of the four teams. He says it's very difficult for him to make a choice. Uh oh, we get down to the finish line. Don't, don't go to Cleveland. <laughs> don't go to Cleveland. Don't go to the Panthers. Even though, I mean, you went to Clemson, South Carolina. I get it. Don't go to Seattle either. Go to the Falcons. Or just go to Washington. But anyway, back to Kyrie Irving. I think the Nets are going to the finals. And I think they're going to play Golden State. And I would love to see this. You're talking about big time storylines. Big time storylines. Golden State versus KD. Yes, sir. I will tune into all the games if that happens with that. I would tune into all them games. Because that's my final. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, any, anybody with James Harden, as long as he don't win, I don't care because he's a little punk crying to get out of places all the time. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. People like him get on my nerves, yo. Because we got players like Damian Lillard, who's one of my favorite players in the NBA, who's been stuck. He even kind of mentioned about getting traded, whatever, whatever, but never pushed the envelope to do that. He's still stuck in Portland. And you get rid of C.J. McCollum. You try to get him some old and Car Carmelo Anthony and stuff. This guy has got nothing. No help. No nothing. Even when the Western Conference was winnable. And he's taking him to the Western Conference Finals. Damian Lillard, it's time to be selfish. It's, ta it's time to start complaining. You need to get up out of there and go somewhere so you can try to win. Time is ticking, Dane. Is Dane time? Well, that, your watch is almost broken, Dane. You need to start. You need to start complaining. You need to start going somewhere else. Simple as that. I'm sorry because I love Damian Lillard, but this will be another waste of talent when nobody's trying to help him, Dan Marino. I mean, it's unbelievable. The next guy is probably my. He might be my first or second player in the NBA too. I'm torn between him, between him and Ja. Ja is just Ja. But um, Luca, 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 please. Please, I know I know you're faithful to Mark Cuban in Dallas. They already let Porzingis go. Please don't stay like like Damian Lillard. Make them build something around you. Dirk and Whiskey was lucky to win. He was lucky to win. And the only reason why he won because he went to get fraud LeBron James when he was with Miami. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't tell me you and Jason Terry and guys are coming. You were lucky to play LeBron, Fraud, James. But Luca, come on, don't do it. You are a phenomenal talent. You deserve the big time. You need to be on the big stage. You need to be in the playoffs every year. You need to be deep in the playoffs. If y'all need to start doing some James Harden and start crying and complaining, do it. Because you deserve it because you put the work in and you're going to battle. This guy, James Harden, this guy's just flopping around everywhere. You going from team to superstar team to superstar team to superstar team. It reminds me of LeBron James. But you just ain't winning none. That's the difference. The only difference between him and LeBron is LeBron won. So, y'all doing the same thing. Doing the same thing. Flopping around. Oh, well, with this roster, remember LeBron? With this roster, I just don't think we have enough to win. How does everybody in the locker room feel when you say that? Build them up. I can get it. I can get on with LeBron and everything all day long. We running out of time, though. We running out of time. NCAA tournament started last night. First four in. These first four in have no shots to do what other teams did. They're one and done. I think Indiana. All I think I'm all. Done. I think they're all done. I think all of them will lose in the first round. But I will tell you the first round upsets. I got three for you. And if y'all ain't turning your bracket yet and y'all aren't in our bracket challenge, don't be copying my picks because you know I'm right. I'm picking Virginia Tech, 11th seed over Texas. Texas 6th seed. Man, they're, they've been... That's why he ain't there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tech. I was I was with my brother Derek, and we were watching that um, Tech beat Duke. And maybe that's what it is because I can't stand Duke. Yeah, I hate Christian Leitner. Yes, I do. But um, can't stand Duke. Can't stand Duke. Can't stand Duke. And speaking of Duke, listen. Yo, I'm going to be for real because I love doing this. I love talking sports. I love being on this platform. Um, Bomani, Bomani. Y'all know Bomani? Bomani Jones? 
ESPN, whatever, whatever. He has a show on HBO. You have to check it out. He just had his first episode on Sunday. It was Selection Sunday. He has Stephen A. Smith as the guest host. You need to check it out. And the spot, the segment he did on Coach K, you will be flipping out if you watch that. Please somebody watch that and comment that you watched it. Because when you see that, you know, the whole format of the whole show is phenomenal. I love it. But what he said about Coach K in that spot, oh, somebody please watch it and then comment that you watched it because I could talk to you all day about just that segment. The rest of the segments was great too. Stephen A. Smith was great. He was candid on there. Stephen A. Smith was candid on there. It's a great show. If you have HBO Max, please watch the Bomani Jones show because that jump was banging. All right, my second upset. Uh-oh. Sister Jean's in the building. Loyola Chicago, the number 10 seed. I got them beating Ohio State, the number 7 seed. Got it happening. Got it happening. And then my last one, I got number 11 seed, Iowa State. Beat number 6, LSU. I mean, LSU just lost their coach, yo. They didn't fire the coach. They got all kinds of problems going on. I mean, well, what y'all going to do over there? They can't even concentrate on what's going on. People just worry about other things coming out. I got Iowa State beating them. I got Iowa State beating them. My number one, number, my number one, um, my number one with the easiest to get to the finals, I think it's Kansas. If you look at their road, they got a couple that's tight. They got a couple that's tight, but I got Kansas having the easiest road. The hardest one for Baylor is, is, is Baylor, obviously, because they got injuries. And I just I just don't have them going there now. That injury, could they could get shot before the Sweet 16. Baylor could get shot before they make the Sweet 16. Um, so there it is. There it is. There's my NCAA. And as we go on throughout there, we'll do some more predictions and all that. Um, but before we go, before we go, uh, Scott Hall. Scott Hall passed away. And I know a lot of people might not like wrestling or whatever, whatever. But I'll tell you what. In those days, Scott Hall was my man, yo. He was like, hey, yo, with the toothpick. Scott, I used to do the razor's edge to people in the in the swimming pools. That's how dope. I, I, I loved him. He, his promos were dope. I remember me and Keith and Brandon talking about looking at these old promos. And I ain't even seen all of them. He'd be in the car. It's like, say hello to the bad guy. Yo, he was off the chain. And then when his feud with gold dust, when go to when it was when wrestling first had, you know what I'm saying? It, it, yo, that whole storyline was good. Scott Hall. And then, of course, what he did, the Monday Night War, when he went to um, WCW. You know who I am, but you do not know why I'm here. Yeah, it was good. Sucks that he passed away. I know he had a lot of demons in his life. Um, but he was a great entertainer. Um, most of the time he came to the ring drunk and stuff like that. But when he wasn't drunk, he was a great entertainer. And if you're not a wrestling fan, hey, cool. I like it. I Especially back in those days. Uh, so rest in peace, Scott Hall. And uh, Red Little Sports Talk, episode 78. Share. Share the love. Please, guys. Come on. Hey, especially if you on the show. Especially if you've been on the show, you need to be sharing everything we post, yo. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start checking to see who ain't. I'm gonna start calling y'all out on the show. Be ready. Be ready. Uh oh, breaking news: Deshaun Watson. Ah, uh, it doesn't say yet. He said he met with all this. Oh, he said he's scared. I, I feel like it's gonna come out tonight. I'm trying to be on here. I'm trying to pop the breaking news right here before everybody else does, but I'm not going to. Relics of Sports Talk, episode 78. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe. Merch is on the Facebook page that my co-host on Raw Tommy runs. Check us out. Share the love. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Thanks for the praise from my mom. We still rolling. Thank you.